Now we're going to taste some Missouri wines, and I've picked five grapes here that I think are doing some wonderful things in this particular state. I'm starting out with a Tramonet. It can be made sweet, it can be made dry, it can be made everything in between. This one's dry, and, and I really like Tramonet that way. It still has that floral note, touch of cherry, touch of honey, finishes clean and crisp, and that's the way I like it. Chardonnay, another grape that's huge in the state of Missouri right now. Now, a lot of people notice that Chardonnay has, a, as a parent, Chardonnay. What do we do with Chardonnay? We stick it in barrels, right? So they love to stick Chardonnay in barrels. That's cool. You can do that if you want to. I must admit, I happen to like the cleaner, crisper, lighter style of Chardonnay. And that's what's going on here. This has no barrel to it at all. It's just very kind of green pear, green apple, crisp and tangy at the end. And I think that's a pretty cool thing for Chardonnay to be. First red grape I have here, another grape I want you to write down. And as your homework, you must drink this. Chamberson, it's really good. Missouri is doing really good work with Chamberson. Okay, other people are too. I mean, heck, they grow it in Australia, for crying out loud, but Chamberson is cool. It has this wonderful raspberry, strawberry note in the nose, and then you get it in the mouth, and it's like black cherries. It gets a little bigger, a little broader. I mean, it smells like Beaujolais, almost tastes like Pinot Noir. So sort of, you know, two wines in one glass. How can you beat that, right? And I think that's what we're doing off and on with Chamberson uh, throughout the state right now. It's very exciting to me. And then Norton, very consistent. Well, heck, it's our state grape, right? Missouri state grape is Norton. A light, shy, retiring grape. No, it's huge, it's massive, it's big, it's obnoxious. Oh, well, not exactly that, but it certainly is loudmouthed, you know? I mean, it's just a massive, loud, showy kind of wine. Uh, smells like every fruit you can imagine, all the way to prunes, uh, for crying out loud, and red cherry and strawberry and everything like that. And then when you taste it, it's got toastiness, it's got the spiciness of barrel time. I mean, that's what barrels do. Barrels don't smell oaky, they smell, make wines that smell spicy. Black pepper, clove, nutmeg, allspice, that kind of stuff. That's in there. Something a little bit earthy is in here, and it just, to me, makes a very complete, indeed very complex wine. It's huge, it's massive. That's what you get when you get Norton, and when you need a little dessert after that. Well, the state of Missouri is doing really cool dessert wines. Why? Because we use hybrid grapes here. Now, we don't have to, but that's pretty much what we use here. And the reason is, is the climate is a lot nicer to hybrid vines than it is to vinifera vines. Those are the vines that are native to Europe that have names like Chardonnay and Cabernet and, you know, Zinfandel and Sauvignon Blanc and all that. So what has been done over the last century or so is people have crossed European vine, vinifera, and American vines, and created these hybrids. Now, the thing about these hybrids, not only do they thrive in this area, but they tend to hang on to tartness. They tend to make wines that are tart. So now I've got a dessert wine. And here's the place I want to go out on, a little bit on a limb and just say, in general, the dessert wines of Missouri are more consistently delicious than the dessert wines of California. Yeah, I said it. I did. And I mean it, okay? I mean, I'm not here to tell you what you're supposed to like and what you're not supposed to like. But I will say that those of us who judge wine for a living, we look for balance. So I think you should go out, buy a few of these, and see if they have balance.